Good morning. I'm Pastor Michael Thompson de Grief, and I serve here at Trinity with Pastor Kim Beery, and we'd like to welcome you to worship at Trinity United Methodist Church. Uh, we welcome all people as children of God and believe that every person is worthy of dignity, respect, and love. I want to invite you to fill out the attendance pads that are in the pew and pass those down, and if you see any uh, guests here today, welcome them to Trinity. Uh, we're taking a special offering today that will go directly to our soup kitchen ministry here in Hutch that helps to feed our neighbors. Um, we are starting a new sermon series today based on a popular book by Max Licato, You'll Get Through This. So looking forward to those messages from Pastor Kim. Um, next Sunday is Communion Sunday, February 6th. So if you're watching at home, just invite you to have your communion elements ready to join us in having communion together. And then also next, no, not next Sunday, February 13th, Super Bowl Sunday, the youth will be taking up a collection, uh, the Super Bowl of Caring, which will also go to support the soup kitchen in Hutchinson. So if you want to bring loose change or large dollar bills, uh, the youth would appreciate that. Uh, so let's, let's now prepare ourselves for worship as we lean on the everlasting arms. Please stand if you are able for the call to worship. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. Lord, hear my cry and rescue me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea. God who rules wind and water, stand by me. God stands with you in bright sunshine and deepest storm. God gently guides us to safety and peace. Thanks be to God.
Please join me in the people's prayer. God of mysterious ways, you take our fears and turn them into triumphs. You remind us that you are always with us and that we do not need to fear the wind or waves of life. Encourage us to step out of the boat, to come across these difficulties to your redeeming and transforming love. <coughs> Give us courage and strength, joy and peace for all the times ahead. Amen. I want to take a moment to point out that there are prayer requests printed in the bulletin. I invite you to be praying for those members of our church family. Um, there are also prayer cards in the pew. If you have something you would like lifted up, you could fill that out and place it in the offering plate. And then Pastor Kim and I are always available before and after the service if you would like a word of prayer with us. Uh, I'll take just a moment of personal privilege for myself to just say thank you to all of you who are praying for me and my family and who have already sent me cards. It's actually very thoughtful and very touching. Um, I'll be having open heart surgery on February 8th. Uh, to repair an ascending aortic aneurysm. And so uh, I'll be out for a little bit. You're in great hands with Pastor Kim and our wonderful staff. And I look forward to being back better than ever after I recover from all of that. Uh, so let's take a moment now to lift up our prayers in silence. This is Paul's prayer from Ephesians. When I think of the wisdom and the scope of God's plan, I fall to my knees and I pray to God the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. And I pray that from God's glorious, unlimited resources, God will give you mighty inner strength through the Holy Spirit, the sustainer. And I pray that Christ the redeemer will be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love, and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, just how wide and how long and how high and how deep God's love really is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is so great you will never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now glory be to the Holy One, by the mighty power at work within us, God is able to accomplish far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. Will you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Are there any children that'd like to come up for the children's sermon? Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. So today I want to read you the story about Joseph and his brothers. I don't know. Lisa, you have this Bible, don't you? Do you have this Bible? Okay. So this is a story in there, so I'm going to read it to you, okay? Jacob married and had 12 sons. One of Jacob's sons was Joseph, and he was Jacob's favorite. Jacob gave Joseph a special robe. None of the brothers had a robe like that. It made Joseph's brothers angry. So here is Joseph's robe. It was very, very colorful. Joseph's dreams made them even more angry. I dreamt that we were all bundling grain. Your grain bundles bowed down to my grain bundle. I also dreamt that the sun, the moon, and the stars bowed down to me. It means that you all bow down to me, said Joseph. None of his brothers wanted to bow down to him. The brothers went out to the fields to herd the sheep. Jacob saw Joseph to check, sent Joseph to check on them. The brothers saw Joseph and came up with the plan to get him out of their lives. They took his robe and threw him into a pit until some traveling traders came by and they sold Joseph to the traders. My goodness. Wow. Can you believe his brothers? And that they wanted to get rid of Joseph? That's pretty mean. It said that they were angry with him. I think that they were jealous of him. Joseph's dad treated him special. He gave him a very colorful robe. And when all of his brothers just had a plain robe of just one color, typically probably brown. And he also made all the brothers work harder than Joseph did. He sent them out to the field to work. Have you guys ever had a time when you were maybe jealous of someone else? Yeah? I know that I have. Sometimes my friends get to go on, do special things. Like maybe they get to take a trip and I don't get to. I get to stay here and go to work. Or maybe they get picked to lead a group and I don't. No, it's natural for us to be jealous. It's a normal feeling that we have. It all just depends on how we handle that feeling. We have to put our faith in God and that he will help us work through our feelings. So today, I wore my Love God, Love People shirt as a reminder that doing mean things to our friends because we are jealous is not very loving, okay? We need to love people. Can you guys pray with me? Dear God, there are times when I get jealous of my friends and family. Help me to remember to turn to you, for you will help me to love people. Amen. Thank you, guys.
Our scripture reading today is found in Genesis chapter 37, verses 18, 25a. Joseph's brothers saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into the pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hands on him, that he might and that he might rescue him out of their hands and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into the pit. The pit was empty, there was no water in it, and they set him down and began to eat the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have life events ever pushed you into a pit? Ah, the washing machine breaks down, you have a flat tire, and the doctor's appointment does not go well. So many things to remember and challenging life events that swirl around us. Life is really hard sometimes. Who of us have not fallen into a dark pit filled with the feelings of helplessness and depression? A pit from which we haven't the means to escape. A dark, hopeless place. The slippery slides of a pit are hard to maneuver as you try to crawl out. So let's describe a pit as somewhere where you don't want to be and the way out seems to be unattainable. How many biblical characters fell into pits? Well, we're going to find out today that Joseph did. And let's find out, let's find out how his time in the pit made him a better man. Will you pray with me? God of purpose, help us to never forget that you have a plan for our lives as you speak to us through stories of ordinary people. Open our ears to hear and our hearts to understand new insights found in Scripture. Amen. Joseph's story reaches out to us and involves us in the drama of Joseph's life. In Genesis 37, Joseph's wicked brothers turn on him, steal his robe, and throw him into an empty dry pit. Now, Joseph and his family are an essential part of God's plan. Joseph and his brothers are the great-grandsons of Abraham. The name of Jesus Christ will appear on their family tree. This family is important and is very dysfunctional. So let's look a little closer at the details of what happened to the 17-year-old Joseph. From a distance, we may be critical that Joseph's brothers had no right to be jealous of their younger brother. Yet the reality is that their father pampered Joseph. Joseph had two wives, Leah and Rachel, but one love, Rachel. When Rachel died, Jacob kept her memory alive by spoiling their first son. The brothers worked all day. Joseph played all day. They wore clothes from a secondhand store. Jacob had this, gave Joseph this beautiful hand-stitched multicolored coat with embroidery sleeves. And Jacob treated the 11th born like the firstborn. Families are messy, aren't they? Perhaps you felt slighted in your family because of a sibling that gets treated special. Or maybe you have felt the feelings of jealousy when looking at the life of a neighbor or the newly promoted office colleague. 
envious feelings are real and need to be dealt with because jealousy is a green-eyed monster that cannot be satisfied. Proverbs 14.30 puts it this way, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Or in 1 Corinthians 13, love does not envy. Now Joseph's brothers were so jealous they wanted to kill him. This was a murder cover-up from the get-go. They tore off Joseph's multicolored coat, threw him in this pit, an empty well, and it was filled with jagged rocks. There was no way out. It was Reuben who pleaded for his brother's life. So they beat Joseph and threw him away. Now after that ordeal, don't you think they would have felt some guilt about what they had just done to their brother? <laughs> no. The scripture says that they sat down and they ate a meal. Hmm, I'm sure they could hear Joseph's cries from the bottom of the pit, but they were hungry, they didn't care. Lunch mattered more than their brother. Can you imagine how young Joseph felt as he heard the laughter of his brothers eating their meal? I'm sure that the view of looking up and seeing only rocks was overwhelming. So let's think about the despair and hopelessness that Joseph must have experienced. Take a moment and remember a time in your life when you felt like there was no hope. We will be examining Joseph's life in the next six weeks through the sermon series based on Max Lucado's book, You'll Get Through This. Lucado tells stories of individuals who were thrown into a pit because of life circumstances. A woman whose husband left her. A man who lost his job. A teenager who's been given the ultimatum to choose to live with mom or dad. In each of these situations, Lucado speaks these words. You'll get through this. It won't be painless, it won't be quick, but God will use this mess for good. With God's help, you will get through this. As we explore this mantra of hope, let us understand that it's given to all of us. By giving us stories like Joseph's, God allows us to study God's plans, a master weaver and a master builder in our lives. You will get through this. The cries of despair say, you're stuck. It's not going to get better. There's no hope. There's no faith that can get you out of this pit. And those voices are loud. Yet, remember that we are not alone. Well, the the fear is that the depression will never lift, the yelling will never stop, the pain will never leave. But here in the pit, surrounded by steep walls and angry brothers, we wonder, when will the load lighten? God gets us through stuff. Through the Red Sea onto dry ground, through the wilderness, through the valley of the shadow of death, and through the deep sea, as recorded in Isaiah 43. I will, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the waters, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. God's favorite word is through. When we're moving through things, let us acknowledge that it won't be painless. God can weave our pain for a higher purpose. Pastor Michael and I were talking about major surgery since he's getting ready to go for what, your eighth major surgery, something like that? Yeah, we're, he's, an old pro, he's an old pro at all this. So as we were talking about this, I I realized that personally, going through major surgeries has given me this new compassion for people who are recovering and frustrated when it takes too long to heal. 
Losing both of my parents allowed me to understand how people feel as they plod through the valley of loss. Facing a job rejection helped me learn about rejection, processing the confusion, and learning how to trust God when things don't turn out as planned. So that pain that we experience can be purposeful in our lives if we're molded by God's help during those times. And yes, it won't be quick. Many times, God is not in a hurry as puzzle pieces of our life are put in place. We have an opportunity to experience the blessing and curse of waiting. Are you good at waiting? I'm not. I wait impatiently for a phone call from the doctor and become irritated when I'm put on hold yet again. How frustrating. But we are called to believe that God is working things out for good while we wait. Most importantly, God's good and our good. When I was called to serve a church that rejected me the first time around, I had a woman come up to me and tell me that I had really grown spiritually since the last time I had preached there three years earlier. She used these words. She said, you've grown up. Your faith is deeper and you can articulate better your faith journey. I think that those three years, they were good for you. Didn't feel that way to me. At that, at that time, I'm, I, in the, when we're in the midst of something, we sometimes don't recognize that God is helping us grow. Growing as disciples, as leaders, as servants. Remember, it won't be quick. And God will use your mess for good. We see a perfect mess. God sees a perfect chance to train and teach us. Joseph came out of the pit that would become part of the training for a future prime minister. Like Joseph, we see a prison. God sees a refining fire. We see famine. God sees a relocation of his chosen lineage. We call it Egypt. God calls it protective custody, where the sons of Jacob can escape. Joseph will one day be raised up and have a son named Ephraim. God has made me fruitful. That's what Ephraim means. And Joseph says, God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. Our lives can mirror Joseph's too. So I want us all to read together this mantra here. And we're going to not only say it to ourselves, but we're going to say it to our pastor. Okay? Are you ready? Are you ready? You'll get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this best for good. With God's help, you will get through this. Uh, with God's help, we will get through it. From, the deep, from deep in the pit... Joseph heard a new sound, the sound of a wagon and a camel, maybe two. This is a, he heard new voices, foreign voices, saying things like, strong as an ox, he can work all day. Joseph was sold into slavery. The brothers took the coins, grabbed the fancy coat, and walked away. Joseph fell on his knees and cried. He cast a, cast a final glance over his shoulder and the backs of his brothers, and he cried out to them, and no one heard. No one turned around. Stripped of a name, status, and position, everything Joseph had, everything he thought he ever had, gone, vanished, poof. Just like that, down, down to Egypt. Joseph arrived in Egypt with nothing. His family tree was meaningless. 
no credentials to stand on. He had lost everything with one exception, his destiny, his purpose. Joseph goes from pit to purpose. Joseph embraces God's presence and provisions, and so can we. The good news then and now is that God did not leave Joseph alone in the pit. God does not leave us alone in the pit. Joseph's story points forward to Jesus. Did you know that Jesus was alone in a pit? in his temptations, in his sufferings on the cross, in his death, in a way that means we are never alone since aloneness has been filled by God. In fact, Jesus prayed Psalm 6, and this shows us that God, out of his unchanging love, has been there when we seem to be the most alone. In Jesus Christ, God goes further than the farthest reaches of our God-forgetfulness, our isolation, our God-forsakenness. We see that there is no distance from goodness or joy that God has not already surpassed and exceeded. God's infinite love has surrounded us. Do you believe in God's faithful love? What would it look like to, in your life to make God's presence your passion? Well, I challenge us. Are you going to be more like a sponge or a rock? All right, let's look at the sponge here. Place a rock in the ocean and what happens? Its surface gets wet, the exterior may change color, but the interior remains untouched. Sometimes in our lives, God's not touching our inner places. Maybe we're hardened by bitterness, hardened by disappointments. I don't know. Are we like a rock? But place a sponge in the ocean and you'll notice a change. It absorbs the water, and it changes in shape. The ocean penetrates every pore and the alters the essence of the sponge. God surrounds us the same way the Pacific surrounds an ocean floor pebble. God is everywhere, above and below and on all sides. Here's the deal. We choose our response, rock or sponge, resist or receive. Everything within you may say, harden your heart, run from God, resist, blame God, but be careful. Hard hearts never heal. Spongy ones do. Open every pore of your soul to God's presence. Your family may be gone. Your supporters may have left. But God has not budged. God's promise stands still as recorded in Genesis 28. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. God redeemed the story of Joseph and gave him purpose. And your life can be redeemed also. Remember, you will get through this. Amen. The ushers are going to come forward to receive the offering. This is our opportunity to respond to God's grace and blessings in our lives with gratitude and thanksgiving.
calm and storm, we present these offerings to tokens of our lives in grateful praise for your love for us. Use these gifts for the ministries of hope and justice in this, your broken world. Amen. Tower Bells for blessing us with your music today. As we go forth, reclaim your purpose. God needs you. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>